How do they handle these losers? Do they stand and watch, shoo them away to have them come back again? Do they arrest them? Do they start firing bullets into the air? How do they discourage this? Well, I think um, the point has already been made by those who are out in the field that when the police officers are there, uh, those who are looting disappear. It is when the police officers uh, have to go to another scene or whatever the case may be that they reappear and start looting and destroying, mm -hmm. et cetera, again. The purpose for having the National Guard is for uh, the express reason of making sure that there's an established presence and they don't come back after they've been removed from the scene. And so we have to have it contained and okay. constant. Councilman, well, Mr. Councilman, thank we you. We thank you very much. We don't want to cut you off here. In fact, we'd love it if you could stick around and be with us some more as the evening progresses. But All we're right. being told to run out to Art Rascone, who is out at Los Angeles International Airport, I believe. Art. Yes, uh, and boy, look at that terrible sight that you're looking at. All those black, the, the black smoke in the air, uh, it's just simply filled the entire Los Angeles Basin area. I'm at the airport, and the reason I am is because of the enormous amount of delays that that smoke has been causing. Uh, Southwest Airlines simply, uh, it was just inside the terminal, they announced that half of their flights have been canceled for tonight. The other half are delayed at least by an hour. Other airlines as well are announcing enormous delays, and this is the reason why. The city is simply under siege. We have a city that has been aflame for uh, all day and all night, of course. And in my drive over here from South Central Los Angeles, we simply noticed dozens and dozens of buildings, businesses, either looted or uh, vandalized or burned in some way. It is simply amazing. I stand in awe and amazement over what has been taking place throughout the, uh, throughout the city. And of course, uh, as you've witnessed and as uh, we've been able to witness all day and all at night, uh, the destruction that has taken place is simply enormous. Something that should be mentioned here since I am at the airport. Beach. It is un unbelievable how to see all of these blooms of smoke and I'm just wondering if some of those aren't uh, perhaps uh, residential homes because uh, the fires that we're looking at right now, uh, Hal, it, we might, uh, should we go over and take a look there and, and we'll hold off on the Roosevelt Hotel just for a moment. Uh, okay, well, uh, let me just ask you this then, uh, just by sight, uh, glancing up to the Hollywood Hills, do you see any major... Uh, blazes yes, up. We, we definitely see some gray smoke up there. Uh, we don't see the the big black smoke. Uh, the fire we're looking at now is is where Olympic, uh, or rather La Brea, turns as it passes Olympic, and that is not a private home. That is a commercial structure. Right. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe you could go over what what the uh, CHP uh, officer told you, Hal, because this just looks like. Uh, a planned uh, uh, strategy of an army. Well, you're, you, uh, you, you just about summed it up. He said that they did arrest uh, six individuals uh, who they caught setting fires, and the evidence they had after the arrest was that it was a planned, organized uh, operation by a gang in the Los Angeles area. And is this a new fire we're seeing now? This is a new fire, yes. That's the thing that I'm, I'm saying, uh, Larry, when... Uh, we were looking around and covering the others. Uh, there was no fire here. Uh, ben, our pilot, said, look, we have several new fires over there, and here they are. Uh, this is that commercial building off of uh, La Brea, and uh, uh, we're going to hesitate. So let's, let's go to the one ahead, Ben. Well, Stan, that one is at La Brea and Edgewood, I understand, which is near the La Brea Tar Pits. Is that correct? Uh, yes. What was the question again, Hal? No, no, there was no question. Oh. Just... Uh, we're, we're location. Yeah, just the location, location by yes, the uh, it's tarpet. It's near, uh, near Olympic and La Brea. Now look at the, the oh, fire yes. in the uh, picture right here. Uh, we're now passing San Vicente, and uh, we'd be coming up on uh, Pico. And uh, that fire has just started. So uh, somebody is driving around, or a, a whole gang uh, driving around, uh, starting these, these fires. This Stan, is a, uh, a food market that's on fire. You know, Stan, it looked to me like on that last fire that you just went by, the way it was burning, it looked to me like something had been thrown or ignited on the top of the building, yes. and it was burning down through, down below. Probably just tossed it right up, and it took it from top to bottom. Yeah. Uh, uh, you would almost have to assume that whoever is doing this, assuming that 
uh, the same person or persons are involved in several of these fires. They have to be traveling by automobile because the fires are moving too fast for people to even run. And then you can't run and carry all that fuel, too. Corner location. Stan, Hollywood and where once again? I'm, I, I'm trying to read the sign, but if you want to check the Thomas Brothers, it's three blocks west of Vine Street. That's about Wilcox. I think that's it. I think that yes. would probably be it, Larry. Thank you. But look at that. That building is completely consumed, and it's right adjacent to another two-story building that has one, two, three, four different offices. And uh, that's the exposure, and uh, it looks like the flames are burning over into that building. And it started on the roof again, didn't it? It's, it appears to. Okay, that is the corner of uh, Whitley and Hollywood. Whitley? Yeah. Whitley, all right. And what, what building is that? Can you make it out what it is? Uh, I can't, uh, Hal. Uh, maybe Martin, if he gets in real close, can see the sign, but that <laughs> sign has pretty well been, uh, been destroyed by the flames. These fires, and still coming under gunfire, rocks, and bottles. This is Los Angeles as we see it tonight, at least part of it. Uh, Mayor Bradley has uh, come out publicly saying that he hopes every effort will be made to, uh, to do what they can to get people to stay inside their homes. They're saying, please, just for one night, don't go out. Stay inside of your home. With uh, the arsonist tactics through uh, this afternoon, that's certainly true. Um, tell us how fast this fire moved. It seems like you were on that scene just about an hour ago, and it was still relatively small. I'm sorry, Bree, could you repeat? How fast? What, what's, the, what's the timeline on this fire? When did you arrive on the scene? Was it about an hour ago? It was about an hour ago, and we were at another location. But when we got here, I would say in less than 40 minutes, this fire has completely destroyed the shopping center you're looking at. When I got here, you could tell what each one of those buildings were. The signs were up. The glass was in place. You, uh, you could really see it all. And now, as you can see, it's There's a burned-out shell. There's the transformer they're concerned about. Oh, it's on fire now. And you, you see the flames licking up that uh, pole there, too. They are going so fast, I tell you. I, Get back, I, Jody. Are you far enough back? How far yeah, are you from we're, the flames? We're across the street. I know it looks All like right. we're really close, but we're way across the street. We were, a, we were a block closer. We had to move because embers were going into the van, and uh, we, we got nervous. We just saw an aerial view just a moment ago just how close uh, this fire is getting to some, some homes. Yes, and that is the concern with the firefighters that are down at this other location. There are a lot of apartment buildings and re small residential homes in this area, and they are really afraid because of the wind, how it's been whipping around here, that it will, uh, those embers that have been flying across the street constantly since we've been, been here, uh, will light up a, one of those apartment buildings. And with all the hot weather we've been having, you can see why it's a, a, a genuine concern. Our aerial view looks like we've got another hot spot just a couple blocks away that, in fact, it looks like it's a huge, huge fire there. Uh, just a couple blocks away from the one on your scene, Jody. Um, it's just amazing how fast these fires can move. Does it astound you? You've covered another enough fires to uh, have a, well, an assessment I, on that. I, uh, I, I, I enjoy covering fires. I don't like to see fires, but I enjoy covering them. Uh, but this one, um, this is by far the largest fire that I've covered. Um, uh, just the, w the speed with which it's moved and um, the intensity of the flames and the heat is almost like a fireball. I mean. Jody, uh, let me address this to Mark Dunn up, up in uh, Chopper 2. Um, Mark, that big fire there where Jody is, if you could zoom into that so that we could see just how close that is to those uh, homes nearby. Well, yeah, Michael, we're actually we're heading over to that, to that area as we speak. Uh, we've been looking at a, a cluster of uh, three separate fires uh, near uh, Olympic and La Brea that are all burning out of control. As you can see, the fire department had just arrived on the scene when we pulled away. I think we're coming up on the uh, scene now uh, where Jody is, uh, although I'm uh, not perfectly clear where, where her cross streets are. Uh, Jody, what are your cross streets? We are at uh, Pico and La Brea. Pico and La Brea. We are at Pico and La Brea, and uh, we are, we've got our, shot, our uh, camera uh, aimed at uh, this car that this police officers are telling to get out of the area, and he is doing a backup. Carl, let's go back to the fire there. We've got some action over here. Long night tonight, and things may not be much better tomorrow. Dan, as you're following the situation there, do you have any sense of numbers now? How many fires are being reported? How many are burning right now? No, I don't, and there's a very good reason for that. The, the fire department doesn't know for sure either. They are simply breaking out faster and over a wider area 
than even the fire department can keep track of. We called not long ago to try to get a fix on a couple of the more recent blazes. 